Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is how to control true position of an interrupted hole. So the question that was submitted is, can true position be calculated using just one axis? Example, a hole drilled through both walls of a shaft or cylinder, and there's a call out for true position of 5 tenths of a thou to datum A, which would be the center of the cylinder. Does true position really apply? It's only asking for the holes to be center line. So let's take a look at a couple examples to see what we can do with this interrupted hole situation. So I've taken the liberty of drawing an example here, and I don't use the same values up here in the example, but it's still sort of the same situation. We have the two walls of a cylinder, and we have a hole going all the way through. Now we can call this hole out a couple of different ways. Um, first off, we can show an example here where we're saying 0.625, which is the diameter of the hole, has some size tolerance to it. So the hole itself has an element of size, uh, and we're making sure that that hole goes through all. So we're going all the way through all parts, all surfaces. In this case, it's just the cylinder, right? Uh, so both walls, we get this hole going all the way through. And if you know about size dimensions, you know that size dimensions have rule number one applied by default to them, at least in the case of the ASME Y14.5. And what rule number one says is we can't deviate beyond an envelope of perfect form at MMC. So we know the MMC of our feature here is 0.625 plus or minus 3,000. So our MMC is 0.622 and our LMC is 0.628. So 0.622 is our MMC. That means we can't deviate beyond an envelope of perfect form at 0.622. And we can simulate that envelope by using a pin gauge. So if we grab a pin gauge and its diameter measures at 0.622, we are simulating a relatively perfect envelope, perfect enough at least with a pin gauge. Uh, 0.622 is going to be the diameter of that envelope. And as long as that pin gauge can fit inside both cylinders, uh, the feature, the one feature all the way through, uh, it passes for rule number one. So we're checking to make sure we don't deviate beyond this envelope of 0.622. And then we're also measuring uh, the local sizes. So we want to make sure this doesn't get too large in diameter. Obviously, the envelope will check one size, but we want to make sure that local measurements, two point measurements, uh, caliper measurements, whatever it is you're using to inspect this feature, those two point measurements don't get any bigger than the LMC, which is 0.628. So that's checking just the size so far. We're not checking location orientation with that at all. We're just checking how big or small that hole is. And we already see by checking to make sure we meet rule number one, we're making sure that they're somewhat in line with each other. So we gain that out of the gate with just the size dimension and rule number one alone. Now we can add clarification here with the continuous feature here. So again, I'll argue um, there's enough here on the through all to assume that that is one feature. But since they are technically disjoint features, we could definitely add the CF symbol here, the continuous feature symbol to the scenario to add further clarity to say this is one feature. Um, for position on this though, we wanna make sure that we're coincident to datum axis A, which is established from this outside diameter. So for establishing the outside diameters datum feature A, we get a datum axis right down the middle. And we can see that datum axis would be right here. So if our intent is that this hole doesn't exist over here or potentially over here, we wanna hold that coincident, right? We wanna make sure this axis is somewhat coincident to the datum axis. And that's what we're accomplishing here with true position or the position symbol, as the standard calls it. We can see that we are making sure this axis is being held coincident to datum A, which is the center axis of the outside diameter, and then located to datum feature B here. Now this datum feature B doesn't need to be there if we don't want to. Uh, we would just say that nothing is controlling the location of that axis uh, uh, up and down datum axis A. So we can add that B there, leave it out. Again, if you left it out, it'd be an underdefined drawing. Hopefully you'd have something else controlling the location. So we're gonna have datum B here, uh, reference in the feature control frame to control that location. And when we're checking this position, what we need to utilize is we need to consider the UAME of the envelope. So we need to picture uh, an envelope that expands inside these two cylinders, expands outwards, right? Um, and it continuously expands until it can't expand anymore. That is called the UAME for this one feature. 
Um, so let's picture that envelope here. It's going to be a cylindrical envelope that expands outward. And regardless if these cylinders are, are poor orientation, we already checked that they met, met the size dimension, but we're gonna use this envelope, the UAME, uh, to establish the axis of this feature. So the center of that envelope is the axis of the feature. Now that axis has to be inside the diametric tolerance zone of 20 thousandths uh, relative to datum A. So this blue tolerance zone is dead center on the datum axis A. And so wherever these holes go, this axis is gonna go with it. So if these holes drift a little bit this way or they drift a little bit that way, the axis is gonna go with it. But that axis, regardless of what happens to itself in location relative to A, uh, it's gotta make sure that it's staying within that diametric tolerance zone. And if we consider worst case size and worst case location, which is coincidence to datum A, uh, we can consider a worst case boundary. And this boundary is called the virtual condition or the inner boundary or the MMB. So again, we won't be able to measure this diameter, but we can see that worst case, if these holes are really small and they deviate, they're most in position, this is a boundary we know we'll never cross. And we can calculate that boundary. It's simply the MMC minus any geometric tolerance. So it's 0.622 minus 20 thousandths of tolerance. So our virtual condition is 0 0.602. So this is a diameter or a boundary, a worst case boundary. We know that nothing about either of these cylindrical surfaces will ever cross into that boundary. And that diameter of that boundary is 0 0.602. So if we had a mating part that we were hoping to assemble through here, we know we have a boundary available to be with inside of, uh, and that boundary is 0.602, and we know that mating part will never come into contact with these surface elements. So we can use that boundary to calculate things like fits uh, or mating parts and their allowed deviations. We know this boundary is available for deviation. So keep that boundary in mind, 0.602, as we go into this next option. Uh, let's go into the option number two. Now, one thing we could also do is we can control these holes separately. Um, and what we would do is we'd put a two times in front of that. Now that's two separate instances. That's two separate positions inspections. That's technically two separate features. Um, but what we get because of simultaneous requirements is that we're also controlling the location of this axis relative to this axis because it's a pattern of features. And that's just how patterns of features work with true position or the position symbol. So now we're saying that, okay, well, we have two features. We have two separate size inspections, two separate location inspections. So we're gonna go ahead and check both of those sizes to make sure that they both pass rule number one. We wanna make sure that we can get a pin, a separate pin in both of those holes, uh, that pin being 0.622 once again, the MMC. So we're gonna check and make sure we don't deviate beyond that envelope of perfect form for size dimensions in rule number one. And then we'll also check those local sizes. So we wanna check those local sizes here, local sizes here, make sure that they pass the LMC limit. But if they have any orientation, that's okay now suddenly because we have two separate inspections. We don't need one pin to pass through both of them for rule number one. We just need separate inspections. Each of them can individually pass for a size check. Uh, and so that might be something that you would be okay with or not okay with. And if you already know you're not okay with it, go with the first option. But let's see this option through. Now, when we check the position of this, we check this position specification for this instance here, what we're seeing is we need to have two separate envelopes, two separate UAMEs that are going to expand inside each one of those features and establish a data or establish an axis for each one of those features. So we have an axis for each one of these features separately, but we know each axis has to be within a tolerance zone of 20 thousandths relative to datums A and B. And so we can picture a zone for each one of those axes. And if you'd rather picture one zone for each, uh, you'd see that it really, since they're to the same datum reference frame, it's the same zone that's stacked up on top of each other. And we see that, okay, well, this axis can be in here, this axis can be in here, but they're separate axes now. What we're doing is we're allowing more orientation technically um, because the axis is a little bit shorter. It's not trying to be inside one big zone like we saw previously, one big axis inside the same zone. So it's a little bit different here. We're allowing them to deviate separately uh, and not assess them using the same unrelated actual mating envelope, the same UAME. So a little bit different here. Uh, I would say it's a little less of a conservative control. So we can see that we would pass position for each one of those. This would have its own deviation. This would have its own reported deviation, but there is a coaxiality control between these two. You know this axis could be over here and this axis 
could be over here. So they could never deviate more than 20 thousandths from each other. So they are being controlled relative to each other in both location orientation because it's a pattern of features. Um, but no longer do we have to have one axis that represents both of them. So they can de deviate differently, right? And so what we'd see here is if we brought back that 0.622 pin, we're not guaranteeing that we can get a 0.622 pin all the way through both holes. Um, we don't have that guarantee anymore. We're only guaranteeing we're getting a 0.622 pin through both of them. But what we'll notice is we can still calculate a boundary, the virtual condition, the MMB or the inner boundary for both of these features. And those boundaries will be centered on datum axis A. And so we can consider these worst case boundaries. And again, it's going to be the MMC minus your geometric tolerance. That MMC being 0.622 minus our geometric tolerance of 0 0.020, resulting in a virtual condition of 0 0.602 for both of these features. And those tolerance zones are perfectly located to each other due to the simultaneous requirements on a pattern of features here. And so really we could picture also the same boundary, 0.602, that neither feature will deviate inside of. So we have the same virtual condition. This is the same value that we got up here in the worst case deviation. So these two callouts are extremely similar in the fact that you can always guarantee that you'll have a boundary of 0.602 available um, in the ideal location, right? Uh, that's, the, that's the worst case size and location orientation of these holes relative to the reference to datums. In both scenarios, you're guaranteeing this boundary is available for mating parts. However, in this first one, we were guaranteeing that you could get a pin through both of the holes regardless of where it's at that pin's diameter is 0.622. So you know, just as far as the size is concerned, you can get that 0.622 pin through both of those holes. Whereas this one, you're not guaranteeing that. You're only saying each individual hole. So the question is, functionally, what do you care about at the end of the day? Which one of these is gonna be more appropriate level of control? Again, this one can be clarified with CF if you'd like that it is one continuous feature, you could not add CF to this scenario down here because you're explicitly saying they are two separate controls. So um, you'd have to consider the functionality of this hole. Uh, it, you know, what, what, what is the size functionality? What is the position functionality? At the end of the day, if you're okay with that worst case boundary of 0.602 versus the size boundary of 0.622 also being on top of that, uh, you'd have to weigh your, your, your pros and cons of each um, situation we outlined here. So hopefully that answers your questions and kind of gives you a little bit of fuel uh, to navigate the decision moving forward and the interpretation of this sort of situation. Thanks for submitting and have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles